There's a cliche that likens Apple's iPhone releases to the swinging of a clock's pendulum. The tick is the release of a whole new iPhone with a brand new design and plenty of fanfare. The pendulum's backswing, or the talk, is when Apple releases an S model, like the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus I've been playing with. People sometimes give the S models flack, but they're sort of where Apple feels the most comfortable trying new things. Before we get too much further, we should probably just acknowledge that the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus are easily the best iPhones Apple has ever made, and if you're itching for an upgrade, there's really no reason to wait. Of course, we have to unpack the reasons why, and what better place to start than with the screen, or more specifically, the 96 3D touch sensors baked into it. It's the biggest fundamental change in how we interact with our iPhones since Siri came along, and fortunately, it's pretty easy to wrap your head around. If you press down with a little bit of force on, say, one of Apple's own apps, or Instagram, or Twitter, it'll open up a menu that provides actions that you would normally only be able to access by opening the app in the first place, so you're able to post your selfies or update your status that much faster. It's also a startlingly handy context tool, so if you get a date or a location in, say, a text message, you'll be able to press and hold and get a preview of where that is or what is currently in your calendar. And anything you are peeking or previewing with 3D Touch, you can actually press a little further in a gesture that Apple calls the pop, which will take whatever it was and bring up its normal full screen view. Like picking up any new behavior, remembering to press down on an app icon will take a little getting used to. Once you do though, you're going to be doing it all the time. Oh, and while we're talking about screens, the 4.7 inch display on the iPhone 6S and the 5.5 inch display on the iPhone 6S Plus are beautiful. Colors are really nicely saturated, viewing angles are about as good as you'd expect from an Apple screen, and it's yet another case of job well done. Apple has also kitted out both new iPhones with what it calls its A9 chipset, which is apparently about twice as fast as the chip we got in the iPhone 6 last year. Make no mistake, these new iPhones are fast. They're easily the snappiest and most responsive iPhones I've ever played with, though. In fairness, the performance difference can be a little tougher to suss out if you're coming from last year's iPhone 6 or 6 Plus. This year, Apple also baked its M9 co-processor right into the A9 itself, which actually unlocks a new trick for Siri. If you want, you can have it set up so saying the words, hey Siri, can activate her from a distance, just like a Moto X, for example. She gets a little confused when the room is really loud, but in general, it works really nicely. And thanks to the new proactive smarts and the new tricks that Siri has learned in iOS 9, it's actually a very valuable tool. The other big update you might spend the most time with is the new camera. Apple finally ditched its 8 megapixel shooter in favor of a 12 megapixel rear camera, and it's easily one of the best mobile cameras I've ever seen. That rear facing sensor captures plenty of detail, not to mention really vibrant and not oversaturated colors. Throw in the ability to record 4K video and a really smartly improved selfie experience, complete with a front facing software powered true tone flash, and we've got easily the best camera situation we've ever gotten in an iPhone. And that's not to be reductive either, I spent time testing this thing alongside a Galaxy Note 5, and I was really impressed with the shots both of them produced, there isn't a clear winner and it's really going to boil down to your preference. Touch ID has also gotten a pretty substantial upgrade, and it's kind of a blessing and a curse. The blessing is that it's almost lightning fast to unlock your iPhone with your fingerprint, and the increased sensitivity means that you won't have to worry about pushing your finger down on it multiple times to unlock. The downside is, since it works so quickly, people like me who've used a quick tap on the home button to check the time or change tracks will have a little bit more difficulty doing so. You'll probably have to change your behavior entirely. Speaking of slightly frustrating things, I find it odd that Apple insists on keeping the 16 gigabyte iPhone around as the floor, especially since we're in a hardware upgrade cycle and the iPhones can now shoot both 4K video and live photos that take up about twice the space of a normal 12 megapixel shot. In fairness, iOS 9 is smaller than previous versions and developers can now flag certain parts of their apps that your device won't have to download if they're not applicable. I'm just saying it would have been nice for Apple to take a stand in this surprisingly substantive upgrade cycle and say, no, no, enjoy the new space. 32 is where we're going to start. Between the focus on thoughtful efficiency that iOS 9 brings and the power of what's inside the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus, it's really no surprise we like this thing so much. It's an incredibly polished package. 
And really, there's no better argument for the death of this stupid TikTok cliche than the 6S itself. This is not a pendulum swinging backwards. This is not Apple phoning it in. This is Apple making valuable changes to the foundation of iOS and the iPhone itself. And we're gonna see the rippling of these moves for years to come. For now though, all you have to worry about is that the iPhone 6S and the 6S Plus are truly first-rate smartphones, and you really can't go wrong if you want to upgrade to one or jump on the bandwagon for the first time.